This is just a quick video uh, showing uh, some of the ABS parts. Every time I like uh, print some of these, the, the quality, I, I think that this is about as good as it's going to get, you know, that the quality can't actually really improve. Um, and uh, then I'll find yet another trick or I'll find something else. And uh, albeit uh, it's, it's kind of amazing because uh, um, the uh, uh, parts look absolutely fantastic coming off of this. And uh, whenever I do a change, uh, there are so many people ordered black parts or whatever. Um, I'll actually print the black parts with the, uh, uh, the first changes that I made. Right now you see that uh, uh, what I call plate number uh, two, I'm actually printing a two-up uh, version, so it's actually parts for two different machines coming off of this plate. But uh, uh, anyway, I just figured I'd show it. Uh, a little bit of what it is, um, I've got green uh, PET tape, which is similar to Kapton tape because they both um, actually, uh, you know, both of them actually run uh, about the same. Uh, but the PET tape, I have it a little bit thicker because I use it for production, and it comes in uh, four inch widths, um, and uh, Captain comes in four inch widths also. Uh, but this way, I can kind of differentiate the plates that I use, and then. Uh, um, uh, pretty much it's got the uh, mirrored plate underneath. Um, I really like mirrored plates much, much better than uh, the borosilicate or, you know, the trade name for it is Pyrex. Uh, and then underneath it, there's a, uh, um, the heated bed and then using what they call bulldog clips on it. Uh, just to keep that mirrored plate as tight as can be. I used to use tape to hold these things down and uh, uh, truth is, um, the uh, clips actually work better, and plus, I can actually pull the clips off uh, in, you know, in under 30 seconds, I can swap out a plate. Uh, once I get the uh, next thing ready, uh, I'll put this plate back on, and in about uh, uh, 10 minutes worth of reheat time, uh, 5 to 10 minutes, then uh, I'm printing again. Without heated bed, um, then... Uh, if you print just on blue tape, uh, then you can actually start printing within, you know, 10 seconds of when you pull the parts off. So, uh, and you don't even have to remove the, the plate. Uh, the parts just pop off pretty good. Um, but uh, anyway, just figured I'd tell you, I've shot down every other machine in the shop just to show this is as loud as it gets. I actually got a slight vibration in this that I've got to fix, but uh, um, I've used uh, this machine more than any other vision printers in... Uh, uh, it's taken an awful lot of abuse because I've thrown pretty much everything I can think of at it and uh, it still prints really really well so uh, uh, you can hear the fan for the power supply just kicked on um, I didn't really like the fact that it has fans um, but uh, because it, it kind of increases the noise level just a little bit but uh, uh, the truth is that power supply actually produces a very very stable uh, voltage which is really really good for the machine so anyway it's a little bit of a trade-off but uh, one that I thought was quite worth it so I just figured I'd show it take care one other quick thing to note is that uh, um, there's no strings on these parts uh, it's totally devoid of any sort of uh, uh, drooling or strings or anything between the parts um, as it keeps printing um, uh, like I said, they just look fantastic. And uh, if you want to see um, uh, one of the videos that uh, I kind of like watching is some of the early uh, videos from MendelParts.com. And uh, um, his videos were state of the art, you know, two, three years ago uh, for a lot of the stuff that he did. And uh, uh, he was the first uh, manufacturer that I know of that did wide scale printing of his own parts um, for, for use on his own printers. And if you look at uh, some of the early videos up until about a year, year and a half ago, um, every single one of his parts had, uh, um, had strings on it. And that's because it, uh, um, uh, he didn't use retract because retract wasn't very stable and it took a little bit more time. If you look, um, this gear actually skips back every time it makes a jump more than two millimeters. Uh, that's called retract. And so I retracted at uh, one millimeter for uh, 0.3 uh, actually for a three millimeter filament or um, for 1.7 to five millimeter filament I, I use like 1.5 millimeter for a retract for it uh, it takes a little bit more retract just because uh, um, you know it's thinner filament and so it takes a little bit more to be able to get it so that uh, uh, there's no strings to it but uh, all in all if you use retract correctly uh, you get fantastic looking parts out of these
I only have one vibration isolation pad underneath it, but uh, if I had a little bit more, uh, just to tell you how it's the desk that actually is creating most of the noise, uh, if you actually raise the machine up, it gets a little bit quieter. So you can see that. That's as quiet as you can actually get it. So that's what, what our goal is, is that uh, basically it's only the, um, uh, only the sound of the motors themselves actually going. And uh, uh, with that, you can't actually get any quieter. This machine still has the Nophead style Z uh, couplers um, for the between the motors and the um, Z axis. Uh, I did away with those uh, now because we use a six millimeter um, threaded rod here instead of the eight millimeter. Um, then the six millimeter works really good because this is a five millimeter um, on the motors. And so with that, I use a flexible nylon tube that's coupled to the two. And the great news about that is it actually helps create even better parts. You can see they turn though. I kind of miss that because uh, now I can't really see, you know, when it does a Z axis move, uh, you can't actually see it on the new machines. Well, it's down to the last four parts here that it's doing, and uh, if you look, I actually left extra space in between those four parts on purpose. Um, so as it does a retract in between, it actually gives a little bit extra cooling time 
Um, if I didn't do that, I would have actually installed uh, an option on there that is called Cool. And what Cool does, it says if you're printing really small amounts and it takes really quick per layer, um, it actually slows down the printer uh, and actually uh, also can turn on a fan. Um, but it'll slow down the printer so that you don't keep melting uh, each successive layer on top of each other and making horrible looking uh, small prints. But uh, anyway, sometimes on small things like gears, it's easier to actually print uh, like a minimum of four or so uh, because the prints for those four will actually look better. Uh, hopefully you'll use the other three later, but uh, um, uh, you know, if you try and actually print one, uh, then you got a problem. It usually takes probably about as long just to print one as it would to print three or four of them um, because you have to wait in between each layer uh, for it to cool. If you notice on ABS, um, I don't use any fans whatsoever. Uh, ABS likes it to be uh, quite warm. Um, if you don't, you get what's called delamination where each successive layer is trying to rip apart and usually does from the layers underneath of it and it makes very uh, weak parts. Um, on PLA, on the other hand, uh, I use as much cooling and as many fans as I can get on it uh, to keep it cool as possible. So that's kind of another little thing about the difference of the machines or, or the materials. Um, on PLA, you cool everything. On ABS, you don't want to cool anything. Two more parts and it's done here. And so basically, pull off the clips. And, uh, good thing about ABS is that, I mean, it's practically hard now. Uh, the last pieces are probably a little soft, but uh, just use those and pull the whole plate off. And put the next plate on. So I like to have plenty of extra plates, um, you know, already good to go. Uh, that way you're not wasting time. I never turn off the heated beds. Uh, they are always hot. Uh, and by hot, I mean uh, they're about uh, 110 degrees Celsius is what I normally run them at. Uh, if I run it any colder than that, uh, large parts like an extruder body um, actually start uh, uh, curling up on the ends, um, which is something you don't want. You want it to, to be dimensionally what you have asked for. So uh, anyway, uh, we'll leave it like that, and uh, in about five minutes it'll be good to go. I'll actually tell the printer to uh, prepare and start printing again, and, uh, uh, and as soon as the heat bed heats up, it'll actually um, it'll pull this down and then it'll actually uh, pull the extruder down and what I do is I actually keep the extruder nozzle so that my zero zero point is actually uh, past the red heat bed here and what that does is that when it actually starts up uh, it'll lower itself so that it is um, 0.3 millimeters off of this bottom edge here and it'll actually uh, go across and drag across of it and if you look underneath it here uh, there's like little pieces of ABS where it will actually just shear it off and uh, uh, that way it actually starts to print without having any strings or anything attached to it. And then if you look, the first thing that I actually print on any of these things is an outline. Uh, it's an option that you can disable if you want to, but if you, um, uh, if you disable it, usually your first uh, couple little millimeters or centimeters of your print uh, don't look the same as the rest of it. So for the little bit of time uh, that it takes, I think it's actually worthwhile.